Yes. 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 Welcome back, and we are definitely hitting the ground running. So we told you earlier on that it's open day Friday. Fun part of it is that you get to be a part of the show. Yeah, but for starters, uh, let's tell you what we're going to be talking about: electricity tariff adjustment, operation Amoteco. Of course, uh, we had a lot of that during the newspaper review, but we're going to delve in deeper. We also have the USA-Iran tension, which has been a major headline grabber uh, this week. Yeah, so talk about all of this, uh, but just. For a little background to the first story, we are going to be taking a look at the electricity uh, tariff adjustment. The Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission approved uh, in electricity tariff by the 11 electricity distribution companies, DISCOs in the country, NEC, said that the customers are now to pay uh, 19 naira more per unit, representing a 236% increase. How has this, uh, this bit of information, how has it been received by Nigerians? Uh, for more perspective here, we're being joined by Boloba. Uh, he's, I, I think I, could, I can call him a friend of the house, yeah? Yeah. Uh, it's good to have you, and Happy New Year to you. To be honest with you, I'm always humbled and feel privileged to be on your side. Wow. Welcome. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> so, you know, we told you about the topics we're going to be taking a look, but let's do it one after the other, electricity tariff adjustment. How did you receive that bit of information? I think I may want to dispute a little bit with you on the facts as real doubt. Okay. I guess you read it from the newspaper. Yes. NEC has stated that what they've done at this juncture yeah. was to accept the submissions of the distribution companies and do a bit of their own independent investigation and that at this juncture they would want the users, the consumers, mm -hmm. to participate before they ultimately accept what would be the tariff in May. Okay. Not April this time. Or either May or April anyway. Uh, yeah. <laughs> there will be adjustment. <laughs> but because we all know the drama as it always plays out, mm. we know that it's almost fait accompli. Once a particular tariff range has been announced, mm -hmm. the vehemence of the consumers and making sure that this does not stay is a bit more pronounced mm -hmm. relatively now i guess maybe because in the last two years mm. this has been done about three times and electricity tariff has gone i'm sitting there one as a nigerian knowing that we are primarily all prisoners of our government because we have a situation where a government mm. that does not produce a service has overregulated the service. Mm. Look, the irony is that in most middle class areas of Nigeria, we generate more power than we need. Okay. We generate more power than we need. Indeed, this entity given the facility you guys have here and the kind of power generation I know you must have to support the enterprises in this, in, in, on this complex, you generate more power than this complex needs. Mm. Okay. But you know what? The, the extant law does not allow the owners of this property to sell power to, to, sell power oh, to, to the neighboring, enti neighboring entities that may be ready to buy. So we have proliferated, we have proliferated pollution sources. You must remember that most power sources in Nigeria, especially independent power sources or power by homes like ours, are dependent on fossil fuel. Fossil fuel is inimical to the environment. So the government is the first. We need to change our laws. Number two, this may not make me look very, uh, very popular with our viewers this morning. As an entrepreneur, 
you cannot NMPC may tell us that it is they may refuse to use the word subsidy and say they are underpricing. Okay. But we all know that is subsidy. You said it. No, no I'm even just the government has <laughs> admitted this time around. <laughs> <laughs> well, 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 you you uh, you have already you have almost summarized the whole discussion, but I'm going to take you also into step by step. Preset upon preset, mm. lines upon lines. Okay. Let's look at because you already. I, 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 you, I know. I know you are a Pentecostal. You are a Pentecostal. Oh, sorry, sorry. You are a Pentecostal. You are calling me a Rasta. Oh, sorry. You are a Pentecostal. This Rasta, Pentecostal. I wait for my time to throw my own. Please, be a Pentecostal. <laughs> okay, look, let's. You've already told me that you want to take my wife. <laughs> you know? Oh my God! I'm sure that was not uh, that was not on, that was not said. <laughs> it's off record. But let's look at. Um, the immediate thing, you know, you are actually giving us a broad solution where it looks quite impossible from the way we are approaching it. If we need about 30,000 megawatts to have uninterrupted power and we're struggling with 3,500 and 4,000 and that looks like, excuse me, we can never do it. And you explain to us that we've been generating power unknown to us, but the real power in quotes, the one that comes from the discourse. Is it our fault that this discourse did not cross their T's or dot their I's and we have to be made, you know, to bear the brunt in paying back this huge amount they are owing back? Oh, the government again. The government again. Not the companies? Uh, I, and I will tell you why we have to... You see, when you are examining a problem, Laser in on the main source of the problem. How, were, how, how was power privatized? Was it pure capitalism as you know it or was it cronyism? Man no man and because man no man, competence didn't so play we, are, we may not be able to go into that problem. You know, this government has been talking about how it was wrongly done. But how do we come out of it? Why is it about increasing tariff? It is almost inevitable at this juncture, if I may quite hog my certificate of unpopularity this morning, it is almost inevitable at this juncture that tariff will go up. Sorry if you're watching from, from home, I don't, you know, I'm not a masochist, I also w would have to pay it, but the reality is that the tariff that we presently pay does not cover the cost of production of power. Okay, uh, uh, quickly, let me quickly announce to us, we're being joined in our Abuja studio by Gide Ojo, who also will be part of this conversation. Gide, let us quickly get your opening statement on this issue of tariff uh, adjustment. Uh, um, Mr. Bola Oba has almost summarized the whole thing to tell us the way out, but what is the immediate uh, solution? What should be the reaction of consumers, especially and uh, probably this goes too, to see how we can reach a middle ground. Otherwise, don't you foresee some kind of big crisis? There is already a big crisis um, because I think it is highly insensitive at this point to increase exponentially from news reports, 78% increase in the tariff of electricity. I do not begrudge the distribution companies of wanting to have a cost recovery uh, reflective tariff. Uh, they are in business to make money, and of course, they are not charitable organizations. But in a situation where the 2015-2016 hike in electricity cost has not resulted into significant improvement in the supply of electricity cost for concern. That is one. Two is the fact that majority of electricity consumers are still being charged estimated billings. And since 2013, when this privatization exercise took place, what we were told consistently was that 
um, you are going to be paying for what you consume. So why should Nigeria be paying more for, black, for darkness? That was a million dollar question I asked in my column in the Punch on Wednesday, this last Wednesday. That yes, you have every right to want to charge a uh, cost reflective uh, tariff, but shouldn't you have thought of significantly improving the services and ensuring that every household is metered? Meter. Um, when I went on the company uh, on the website of Nigeria Electricity Regulation Commission, I discovered that by their own admittance, uh, the, uh, after the initial uh, assurances that Nigerian electricity consumers were going to be provided free meters, they reneged on that and decided to come up with CAPME, which is that you use a credit advancement scheme. So you, you, you buy the, the meter, but you use, um, they will deduct the money you have spent you are by giving you electricity. Now, uh, under that scheme, and you can Google this, it's on the website of, uh, of, of NLC, that for many years, consumers who paid for these meters were not supplied. They were not given these meters. And this happened for like two, three years. Now, you have come up with what is called meter uh, map, meter ad advancement um, policy or whatever, I can't remember exactly. My worry is, if you want to charge cost reflect, let people pay for what they consume. Situations where you just come to a building and say, oh, this is a, this is a, uh, a duplex, and for that reason, they should have AC, they should have iron, they should have electric cooker, and so I'm charging you 20000 In those days when we were going on, we know that there are meter readers who will come and take your, your, your consumption for the month, and you are charged based on that consumption. That is even under the analog meter that we were using for many decades. Now that we have, we have been introduced to prepaid meters, and these prepaid meters are not available. And I was, I, I asked in that reverse article, which is available online for consumers to read, to say, why is the discourse, why are they serving as middlemen between the meter manufacturers and the consumers? And we are talking of over 40 million uh, um, uh, or, or, or metered customers. And the, the, the discourse are not the one manufacturing the meters. So why shouldn't I be able to buy my meter in open market and get the uh, outlets that I buy, I buy it from, just like satellite dish, to come and install it in my, in my premise? And then the, what this course does simply do is to activate. All right. Ms. Ojo, thank you. You know, I, I like the fact that you kept referring the viewer to the NERC website. I also refer Mr. Oba to that website. Maybe you should go to that website and take a look at what they said. Actually, that was where I made my quotes from earlier on. It's exactly what they said. You know, but you also said, Ms. Ojo, that you, had, you asked a million dollar question in your column on the punch that why should Nigerians pay for darkness? Now, let's move smoothly uh, to the other topic we're going to be talking about now. The punch is staring me right at the face right now, and it's saying that Amotekun starts on shaky ground because three governors were absent from the launch. Is that reason enough to call it shaky grounds or shaky start? Let's have your take, though. What do you think about the newly launched Amotekun? Well, uh, I think uh, we need to be very cautious. I, I really do not know why they come to that conclusion. The fact that a governor is not at the launch of a security outfit does not necessarily mean that they were not committed. There have been series of meetings that were held in which the full, si the, the entire six uh, Southwest governors were in attendance. Don't also forget that all the six uh, states of the Southwest are now under the All Progressive Congress. So there, there is no need for us to panic and say, oh, maybe because they are doing politics, uh, this one is opposition. This one. All the six states in the Southwest 
are now members, or all, all the governors are members of the All Progressive Congress. Peradventure, they have something that took them away, for which reasons they could not attend the launch of the security outfit. I think we should dwell more on the content. Uh, at the initial, there were concerns raised by the military and the police that they cannot work with the local vigilantes, hunters, and OPC members because they are not trained. And subsequently, we read that they are going to be trained. So once that capacity building is given to them and they know their limits, because there are concerns also raised that some of these vigilante groups, including OPC, in time past, have uh, murdered people extrajudicially. So if we know that this is a joint tax force, joint security tax force, you then need to share responsibilities. Where does the responsibility, what does the, what uh, is the extent of the powers given to local hunters, OPC members, and the local vigilantes under this security architecture? Are they to apprehend and hand over to police or to the security, or can they also uh, do some investigation and uh, you know prosecution? These are things, uh, rough edges. I think we need to uh, we need to fine tune. But it is too early in the day to say it's it's not going to fly. It's dead on arrival. It's on shaky ground. The, the huge resources has been committed to putting together this security architecture, and I, in my own opinion, want to give them benefit of that, that things will, uh, be, uh, will, will be all right with the outfit eventually. Your, your, your submission is clear, and I quickly want to get your take. I know you have so much to say. Well, let me quickly reduce my own question and let me have your take on Amotekun. I want to agree with the points editorial uh, staffers that it took off on a shaky ground. Not so much because it will not be successful ultimately, but because, let's be very honest with ourselves, the princelets of the sovereign of the sub-region, we have a sovereign, we have, we have a sovereign, you know the meaning of a sovereign? Mm -hmm. S U Z E R E I something like that. Okay. The princelets, the core ideological and biological princelets of the sovereign refused to turn up. And we we'll know that the sovereign has a 2023 ambition. So yesterday what happened was more the fact that a man and those most loyal to him in the gubernatorial class of the Southwest did not turn up. They were privy to the planning. They bought all the requisite materials necessary to be bought by the states concerned, but their not turning up was deliberate. Let's not excuse that away. And the politics. It's an assumption. It's not. It's not an assumption. And I will tell you why it's not. You an have intelligence report. Oh, oh, it's, and it's, I will tell you why it's not an assumption. Okay. For Yemi had to fly to meet the Inspector General of Police day before a day before the event. The Inspector General of Police was scheduled to be there. I was part. I was a participant in June last year when a Southwestern Security Co Confab was held in Ibadan. The Inspector General did not come, but he sent a DIG, now retired, uh, what's the name of this, my uh, big brother. And the AIG in charge, the AIG in charge of Oyo, Oshu was there, and all the commissioners of police from the six southwestern states were there. Yesterday, the AIG was not there, and it was not represented by anybody. At the confab in June, I attended physically. All the governors attended. The, a DIG status officer represented the, 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 the Inspector General of Police. The AIG was there and six commissioners. So it, it was no coincidence. You know what? Initially, 
in, we have always seen from the beginning that the president has been very reticent. Although he promised it when he campaigned in 2014-2015, he promised devolution. Mm -hmm. But since he has assumed power, he has been very reticent to allow for devolution. Even when his party set up a committee and the committee went around Nigeria and things and like this, and recommended things like this, the president himself, and the vice president has been very consistent as a supporter of devolution of policing powers. Mm -hmm. Now, we know there's, there's a degree of conflict, ideological conflict in the presidency in that respect. Come to Amoteku himself. As we speak now, Amoteku is not predicated on any, any valid statute. Indeed, if one wants to be intellectually, a bit intellectually critical, Amoteku is, is an extra-constitutional entity. Okay. But you know what? In the Southwest, it is a child of necessity that virtually all Southwest, Southwestern intellectuals support. And if any governor does not support Amoteku, if any governor is not seen to be supporting, uh, let me correct my friend, I guess it was a sleep. Not all the governors of Southwest are from the APC. The governor. No, from, you said five of the governors. Uh, well, you know, the governor of the governor of the operational center of Amateku. Where it was launched. Not only where it was launched, where it was conceived. Oh, okay. Because the Southwest Intellectual Think Tank. You must remember that there's a think tank in the Southwest that is called Dawn. Yes. Mm -hmm. Development agenda for Western Nigeria. Mm -hmm. the, the, that intellectual think tank. After we were having series of security, security uh, abuses on our populace, it was that intellectual th think tank that called all the all the relevant forces in the southwest to confabulate on what's the way out, and we came to the conclusion that we needed okay. we needed a phenomenon like that. You know, let me let me take it back to Mr. Ojo in um, Abuja. You, so you just heard Mr. Obanawi, who says that he agrees. Oh, he says he agrees with the punch and kind of disagrees with you. You know, Mr. Ronick is the punch colonist. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the punch reader, but on this occasion, I agree more with the presentation of the punch than other newspapers. And therein lies the beauty of it all. But see, this is what I want us to talk about. Yeah. So he says this is not necessarily constitutional, but it's. Is, is a child of necessity, yeah. Uh, I want to find out what your take is, bearing in mind that some northern governors have plans already to replicate this. So is this more of a devolution well, um, of policing powers or, I, or something? It, it, it's, it's, um, I, I, I just want to be, well, maybe, maybe not entirely wrong of point to say, it's off to a shaky start, but um, Yes, and thanks for that point of correction. Five out of six, um, or your state governor, who happens to be my governor, is uh, of the opposition PDP. Um, that, that, that's, that is taken, and I, I actually followed through from the development agenda for Western Nigeria, the agitation and all of that. But we cannot do away with the fact that um, if we say everything has to be written in the Constitution until then, uh, we, we will not do things. Uh, it, it won't fly. The civilian J JTF uh, that is supporting the military in the, in the northwest Nigeria in the fight against insurgency is not uh, a constitution, it's an extra constitutional um, uh, de 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 development. Uh, just like multinational joint task force, there are things uh, you do, uh, not necessarily because um, you have the constitution cannot envisage the breakdown of everything. But I understand what my brother is saying, that um, uh, is a is, um, child of necessity. And we know that at some point last year, uh, up until about April, May last year, many of us uh, could not even go home because of fear of abduction. Um, and this came to a peak after the mother of the daughter of uh, the Afeni Ferry leader, uh, Fashion Ranti. So, um, I just will appeal, whatever politics is afloat about this um, we need to, we cannot politicize security because that there lies the whole essence of governance. According to section 40, subsection 3, uh, it says security and welfare of citizens are the primary reasons for governance. So I will, I will appeal 
uh, from the presidency down to the southwestern governors that they allowed this uh, operation to succeed. Economic, uh, I mean, Southwest is the economic nerve center of Nigeria. Take it or leave it. From Lagos down to Ogun, down to Oyo, you can't leave out those three states where you talk of economy of Nigeria. And that is why it's very important to have the Southwest safe and secured. Not that uh, the other part of Nigeria should not be secured, but it is very, very important that we leave politics aside and do the needful, including mobilizing the necessary resources to make sure that Operation Amoteco okay, is very God, successful. Thank God that uh, two of you are very conversant with our operations on Friday. Uh, we will very soon allow the guests to also engage both of you to, on this issue. So we're going to spend less time with you. But let's quickly, I mean, viewers, sorry. Uh, let's quickly go to the third issue, the U.S.-Iran um, tension, call it, uh, because the uh, President of the United States seems to say that uh, Iran is subtly backing down. But whether that's a, <laughs> that's a fairy tale, we will find out. So what do you make out of it, and how do you think? Do you think this issue is being escalated unnecessarily or there seems to be some kind of uh, diplomatic uh, you know approach in dousing the tension well um it's, it's rather unfortunate that uh, this has further threatened the the hope of having peace in the middle east quite unfortunate that um the number two citizen of iran will have to be extra judicially murdered by the U.S. forces, uh, even while on state duty. I understand that U.S. and Iran had been having a lot of face-off in recent past, um, up until it has worsened under the administration of Donald Trump. Recall that he pulled out of the nuclear deal that Obama signed with Iran and um, there have been threats and counter threats between the two two nations, uh, culminating in the murder of Kazim uh, Soleimani uh, last week. Uh, it's quite unfortunate that things have gener degenerated to this level. And I want to let America know that in as much as it embarks on this kind of, uh, you know, uh, Armstrong tactics. There will never be peace in this in the in in the in the Middle East. Neither will there be peace in US because US will continually be under threat by those who are sympathizers of the victim. And uh, yes, they may not be able to strike successfully on the soil of US. But what about US interest? Since this um, extrajudicial murder of Soleimani happened. We've seen Al Shabab, um, you know, uh, attack some U.S. interest in Kenya, and uh, we have seen protests by the members of the Islamic Movement of Nigeria in, in, in on the streets of Abuja and some other places, uh, which means that uh, we cannot take issues for granted. I, however, I know Trump said he killed Soleimani not to start war, but to prevent war. Um, well, that is its own uh, assessment. There are also people who believe that um, this is a replication of what happened uh, in the early 2000s when uh, George Bush uh, also attacked Israel, I mean Iraq, under the guise of looking for weapon of mass destruction. And this may be an election winning strategy. Don't forget that this is an election year in US and uh, Donald Trump's rating has come very low, uh, particularly with the impeachment by the U.S. Congress. Mm -hmm. So maybe it's a diversionary tactic. Maybe it's an attempt to also uh, win elections, given the uh, Iraq, uh, the Iraq, uh, the Americans, the All fact right. that Mr. I'm Ojo, the one that can protect you. Mr. Ojo, maybe it's also election. about keeping Americans safe, also because I mean uh, Donald Trump keeps saying that it's all about uh, uh, America. Let me come to you, Ms. Alba. So. Uh, Mr. Ojo says what America did was to kill the number two citizen of Iran uh, extrajudicially. So I would like to ask, let's also rem remember that he was killed in Iraq. 
right? What do you call this? It's it was in Iraq on the invitation of the, of the Iraqi government. Absolutely. You know, so this whole brings the Iraqi and so angle. If, if the, what do you call if this? the chief of defense staff of, of the U.S. were to be invited to the United Kingdom mm. and somebody kills him on the street of London yes. whilst being driven from the airport, automatically we know what that means in international law. Absolutely. This is my question. He was a state actor. Oh, really? Yes, he was. I mean, look at his funeral. But this is what I want to ask you. Would you call this, just like he said, an extrajudicial killing or a termination or an assassination? <laughs> we've, just, we've just reasoned to it. We've just reasoned it together. You call it a killing? It was... No, an, not together. A, I'm asking the question. It was a <laughs> killing that was inconsistent with international law and how human beings have globally resolved to treat matters. I never said he was a saint. Good. I was and I never ask. said, you know, given some of the things we've read about him, I never said he was not the intellectual power behind some of the forces disturbing the U.S. across a broad spectrum of geographical space. In fact, as, as far down as Libya, you know, people only talk about his activities in Syria, in Iraq, and, and some would even want to angelize that activities by saying, uh, those activities by saying he was instrumental, he was potently instrumental in the deracination of ISIS in, in Syria and in Iraq. Iraq. But you know what? The guy led a duplicitous life of a, of a sort. But he was officially a general of a recognized army on the mm -hmm. face of the earth. Mm -hmm. And the decision, in fact, the U.S., the, the security chieftains of the U.S. were said to have been shocked when President Trump opted for the most bizarre of the options that he was presented with. The same options that he was presented with had been presented to President Obama before. Mm -hmm. Had even been presented to President Bush on this same guy. They opted for a lesser dramatic, lesser insightful, and okay, they, they assassinated him. I would now, having explained that, use the word assassinated. Now, they assassinated him, and Iraq, to call U.S. bluff, because you remember after his assassination, President Trump came out and said, if Iraq, if Iran were to do you know, were to shake body. Mm -hmm. You slap me, you say, I cannot shake body. Uh, if Iraq were, or Iran were to shake body, they would, they would give it to, indeed, up to bombing cultural sites. Immediately, he realized that that was against international law and could make him a prisoner of war. He was counseled to withdraw that, and he would do that even publicly, give it to him. But you know what Iraq, Iran did? Although US, US knew that they, would, they, they were going to bomb because Iran intimated the Iraqi authorities that they were going to bomb locations of U.S. and the Iraqi authorities passed it to the U.S. Indeed, U.S. intelligence also saw the missiles leaving Iran. Mm -hmm. But Iran literally bombed. It's a long time I've seen that and I've been reading international news. Time Magazine, Newsweek, Economics Magazine from around 1977. Iran literally sent missiles to American formation. No woman being died, but structures... Very symbolic. Yes. Very symbolic. Yeah. We're coming to that. And the U.S. did not reply. Instead, Trump decidedly de-escalated mm -hmm. because Iran showed that not to kill American soldiers, but to show America that your two greatest assets in the Middle East were vulnerable to them and we have the technology to deal with Saudi Hufflepuffs and you know what? The street of Tel Aviv. Mm -hmm. I'm not a supporter even, of Iran. Even, even United Arab Emirates was also talking about I, I, I'm not a supporter of Iran, and I believe that Iran has been, Iran's development has been held back in the last 40 years by, by a theocratic dictatorship. But having said that, this peculiar U.S. president too has, a, has an issue with a okay. sense of judgment that Mr. won't... Bolivar, you have already Absolutely. opened the conversation and yeah. we want to throw it back to our viewers now yeah. to be part of this discussion. The lines will be open and you need to be specific. You need to make it uh, 
using the words of the two people in the studio, keys, keep it short and simple. <laughs> and you can also mention the name of the people you really want to respond. I'm doing the sound of the person. <laughs> <laughs> when you are seated with a mysterious so, presenter. <laughs> Wait, excuse me. So quickly, well, the lines are open. What do you really want to talk about? Is it the uh, tariff adjustment when it comes to electricity? Is it the Amotekun that was launched yesterday? Or the US uh, Iran? I know you're tempted to talk about the three, but if you have to talk about the three, you've got to make it very short and simple. And don't forget the rule of the game. When you call, please turn down the volume of your TV set. Tune it down completely, or you put it on mute. Hear us through your phones and not through the TV. And the lines are open now. So I was just um, uh, uh, listening to you ra uh, with rapt attention and we're looking at it critically. So in all this, what do you think this man is? Because you alluded to, to it possibly. Was he really For in me, any was way, what was he For in me. any way sponsoring terrorism? Oh, yes. And what well, is wrong well, with yes, killing a well, terrorist? Uh -huh. uh -uh. The difference is this. Sponsoring and... No, the difference the, is this. Let me, let, let, me, let me give you examples that will shock you. Today, in the American government, in the American government, you have people who are privy to some terroristic events some, some parts of the world. Mm -hmm. They do this to further their own interest. Don't, don't be fooled. Mm -hmm. uh, look, a country that most of you people like to go to see Paris and die. A country has a contract with other countries in your neighborhood. That is why I will never allow Nigeria to join the ECO in your neighborhood to say those countries are still colonies of France. Hmm. Is that not your own interest? Look, don't be fooled. All these countries use other countries. Why is Britain, Britain, that allowed, that allowed plebiscite to be held in, you know the rule. Up. You know the rule. Let's From time to time, time, we are going to <laughs> we're going to be caught you. Let's have our first caller uh, talk to us. I didn't get the name. Okay, we lost that call. Uh, I, I, okay, uh, we, yeah. I think we have another caller from Abuja, but we will we, we'll take that call anytime soon. I was going to go to Mr. Ojo in um, Abuja. You know, the House, U.S. House uh, of uh, Congress, just voted to curb. Trump's powers to take military actions in the wake of Qasem Soleimani's killings. Obviously, they are not uh, in sync with the president. It, brings to, it begs the question, who has the power to declare war, the president or the parliament? Well, uh, the president has to seek the uh, approval of the parliament before it can declare war. Okay, so uh, uh, as soon as we're okay. going to. Uh, uh, as, as, oh, okay. um, sorry, Judy Ojo, I hope the network will be sorted out. Let's have the first caller this time around from River State. Wow, I'm sure the network, you won't mess us up today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we're talking about electricity tariff. You see, <laughs> telecoms tariff. That guy would have been charged by now. In a responsible jurisdiction, he yeah. ought not to have been charged. We are, we are on the south because those that should be our watch, mm. you know, they're sleeping with... Don't change our topic. Well, <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, it's, it's essential, yeah? Okay, Gideon Joe is back. Let's allow him to finish his statement. I, I, I do. We got the first sentence quite on point. Yeah. Okay, so sorry about that. It's a technical issue. Don't blame it on telecoms now. Okay, you, you, you. <laughs> it's, a, it's a domestic one. Ah, you know, I know what I like about you. You know what? I, we are very that, that is seldom done in Nigeria. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. People seldom accept responsibility. Mm -hmm. And I tell my workers, you know, I tell my staff members, let's openly tell the okay, customer. Back the to wrong. the issue. That's you rubbing it in, yeah. <laughs> but you guys did it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So I thought you were going to finish what Gideo just started. We were talking about... Gideo was right. Yes. The U.S. Constitution stipulates that Congress must give, must give its 
uh, consent. consent before the U.S. goes into war. But over the years, you know, they have more than 200 years of this. Sorry, we can't miss this time. Yeah. Uh, this is Shagun from Makodi. That's in Benway State. Shagun, talk to us. Yeah, Shagun, you're on. Go ahead. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. I want to commend the effort of the Southwest governors. Yes, I want to commend the governors of Southwest. Good, good morning. Yeah, yeah you're yeah, on. Go ahead. We are on. Yeah. yeah, I want to commend the effort of the uh, governors of Western, uh, Western, uh, Western State. Okay. Yes, I really, I really want, I really want the government to support them. Okay. Beautiful. I want the government to support them because it's a very good uh, initiation. Beautiful. Thank you, you Shago. All what we need in Nigeria now is security. Okay. Okay. I'm sure that's not all we need. We uh, also uh, need Oh, food. no. Security is important. Uh, what well, can you do without all. security? Not all. But you, you know <laughs> the beautiful part of it? Mm -hmm. Masari, on behalf of the Northwest Governor, and it. has also stated that they may have to replicate it. Yeah. Because... You see, our constitution as at this juncture is a, is a, is a large-scale delusion. Mm. We have to retweak this constitution to attend to our contemporary challenges. Why would it be that as a Yoruba man, I would be afraid to drive beyond the Badon now? Mm. And why would it be that Governor Masari would have to go and stand with a general of the Nigerian army with a so-called bandit? And they'll be paying people not to kill people in their states. We have to tweak the law. The law is not meant okay. for man. The man is brother, not meant for the law. Brother, the law is meant for man. Your brother is back now. Julio Joe, talk to us. Well, um, uh, incidentally, I, I appreciate the fact, the concern raised by the last caller um, that you know security is very germane is whether you talk of physical security or food security, it is needful. Uh, Nigeria has have arrested development uh, in the last few years since Boko Haram insurgency started. Uh, because uh, of this insecurity, uh, our economic growth has been stultified. And that is why all efforts must be, uh, all hands must be on deck to ensure that we overcome our security challenges because therein lies our strength to overcome both food security and also physical security. Once that is done, investment in development of infrastructure will be well, will yield the necessary results. Uh, you hear the other day that uh, well, the NRC, Nigeria Rail Corporation Authority, denied that there was shooting at the train. But that somebody stoned the train. You, you know, that, okay, that has its own effect on Jide, scaring uh, people. I'm sorry, we uh, have a many caller waiting. Many people cannot their farms Chibuma now because of insecurity. Chibuma, talk to us. Go ahead, go ahead with your contribution. Yes, okay, my topic is from U.S. and Iraq. You know that, you know that what the next, what the, when the, uh, the, the last caller just called, I, I listen to his speech. When the last caller called, I listen to his speech. He made a statement about in, 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 in the security aspect. The security, we, like, we, we the Nigerians, we do have so much security. And in terms of security, we have stuck on. And we want to make sure that, because if the government should make sure that the security should be very tight in the country, that is my contribution. Thank you. Thank you. you. You want me to stay up in controversy this morning? Yes, sir. I really want... Uh, you want him? No, let's hear him. I really want intellectuals from the southeastern part of Nigeria and the south-southern part of Nigeria to, to so agitate their, go their governors to set up a similar infrastructure in the southeast and the southwest. You know why? You know why? Nigeria will not break. But the people in the southeast too and the south south, they deserve to have quality security. I was kidnapped in Wari on the 12th of June 2018. Hmm. And it will not be out of place if the south south had something like this. Some elements who are strangled old in Nigeria 
may not want the Southeast to have it because of our not too distant history. But you know what? It's about time that we came to the realization that 1967 to 1970 is behind us now, and people must lead qualitative life. Now you started the controversy. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. I because we in the Southwest we agitated have for our governors to do it. Okay, we have another caller on the line. Uh, talk to us. Okay, uh, I, 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 we lost that. But oh, sorry about uh, that. Yeah. <laughs> it was me that. Yeah, so, so let's go back to Didi Ojo in Abuja. You know, he just raised a point. I'm, I, I don't want to call it controversy. I don't want to say he's talking controversy. I don't want to say, oh, he's there. I want to say that it's a debate. It's going to be an open debate. Yeah. So oh, is this, is, is, do we yeah. have a call? Yeah, we have Okay, a we have a call, please. Let's, let's take a call. Uh, good morning. Tell us what you think, please. Gideon, just hold on. We'll pick this call and we'll be right back. Yeah? Yes, okay. Oh, we lost the call. So I was going to say, it's a debate now. Do you think this is just the perfect thing that should be re replicated by all the regions of the country? Also, do you think there is a fear in some quarters that the architects of it all might misuse what they've created? Well, um, I, I, I join my brother uh, Bolova to say this is uh, exemplary and should be replicated across the six geopolitical zones. Um, this is restructuring by other means, but we must not. Uh, we must think globally so that we don't create a monster on our hands. Uh, Vigilantes, OPC, local hunters have always been involved in security informally. This is more or less bringing them in into a formal structure. I, I do not have the privilege of having read uh, what is the modus operandi of this uh, activity, but I will pray and I will hope that all those who are going to be involved in this uh, operation at Motelcon will be well kitted and uh, provided uh, the means of identification so that we don't have infiltration and we don't have because even with the normal security forces we have instances of people showing fake military and police uniform operating in the name of those forces uh, only to discover that they were fake or you know, they were illegally operating but I, I think the primary, primary thing to first solve is this unification. And I, there must be a united you? front by all Apologies. the six state I'm governments. Sorry, we'll let this operation must we'll be well resourced. Abdul Aziz from Once Maryland. that so is sorry, done, So sorry. Abdul Aziz, good morning. Thank you for joining us. Let's have your take, please. Remember, turn it down. OK. We are good to go. Good morning. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Yeah. I want to make my contribution concerning the issue of the issue between Iran and US. Good morning. Good morning. We can hear you. Please go ahead. Yes. Yes. About the issue between Iran and US, United States of America. Hello? I can hear you. Go ahead. Just go, go ahead. ahead. Yes, just tell us. Yes, okay. yes. I'm not uh, a you know, supporter of uh, Iran, but what U.S. United States has done is very wrong. But up to now, we've not... Uh, okay. Up to now, United, uh, U.N. has not condemned the... I mean, what the U.S. did to Iran. I think as a matter of, uh, you know, in the interest of peace, they should condemn the act in the interest of peace, especially in the Middle East. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, uh, but you know, there's a subtle way where NATO forces are withdrawing their troops. Isn't no, that... not subtle way. It was just <laughs> uh, so it's, security it's okay of to say that they are not in support. No, uh, no. NATO forces, uh, NATO states like UK, like Canada, they 
the, the, the lives of their soldiers are very important. When the when the commander in chief of the leading army suddenly did something so erratic mm. that could put the lives of their citizens into, they had to withdraw. But having said that, uh, the last caller made a very valid point. Officially, there has not been a direct remonstrance because the Security Council, the most powerful unit of the UN, is dominated by supporters of how many permanent. How many permanent members we have in the Security Council? Okay, uh, another caller, and uh, we'll take that to Gideo Ojo to respond. Abiola, let's have your take. What I want to say is that about the Amoteku outfit in the southwest of Nigeria. What I want to say is that the the the, the Amoteku issue is a is a good is a good. Uh, it's a good initiative. Number one, I support uh, my, my brother there, Bolauba. Bolauba. Look, there's nobody in Yoruba land that is a true Yoruba land that to say I'm a second is rubbish. I'm unable to go to my own state in Ekiti, from Iwaraja to Esmalaye. You will pray that God save me down to Aramoko. You understand what I'm saying now? Now, if this I'm going to now, I'm very happy I will be able to go to my own state. Look, JTF in the Northwest, who are the people, who are the people? Are they called Yoruba or Igbo to JTF? Because I'm listening to others, others uh, sister station that some people are saying, why can't they call other people to I'm Look, I like it's a low mass issue, right? I'm very sorry to say that. But thank you. Um, I have Kennedy. After Kennedy, Kennedy is also from calling Edo. from Lagos. No, oh, from from Edo. Edo. Good morning, Kennedy. Let's have your take. After that, Kennedy is going to interpret what the caller just said. <laughs> yeah. Hello. Please, Kennedy, go ahead, please. Okay. Hi. I'm Kennedy from Benin. I want to make comments on uh, the Sahara issue. Hello. Hello. Good morning. I want to say that, uh, can you hear me? Very well. Go ahead. Okay. So the Paris issue is what I want to comment on. It's so unfortunate that the country we are, those who have responsibilities to, to manage things are not interested. Uh, one, of the, one of the speakers on your platform mentioned that the, the meter is produced by someone else. And what's called the NEPA or whatever this authority, you know, are serving as middlemen. There is nothing absolutely wrong to have this data you know, accessible to, to all Nigerians so that they can buy and at the end of the day activate by the by those Saudi the public to to give us life. But because we are in a country where those who have the opportunity to enjoy the life don't really see the need for us to. And now, extra boarding has been added to Nigerians. Today, in recent times, you can come from all sorts. Oh, okay. Uh, thank you, Kennedy. Because I'm sure that your phone, you didn't buy it from your service provider. <laughs> you be able to buy me let, let, to Let's phone. take Chukuma. Okay. Let, that's a good one. Let's take Chukuma from Lagos, and after then we'll talk to GD. Good morning, sir. Good morning, good morning. sir. Yeah, I am in support of the man that uh, was talking about um, the echo. You see, I, if you take a good look at uh, Ghana, Togo, Kotonu, the, let's, the, the, the currency of Kotonu, Togo, and the rest of them is not as strong as Naira. Now, Ghana has been facing a lot of difficulty when it comes to stability of their currency. Nigeria currency has been stable for at least for a couple of years. Now, if you are trying to join ECO, the closure of border for this couple of months has been very helpful to both our economy, both in the farming sector. What happens to our border line? So, uh, for
from my own point of view, I see this echo. I I really don't know the aim of them rushing into it now. I was looking at Nigeria as a big brother to be the one deciding on calling the shots, not the Kotonu and Togo or uh, Nigeria deciding what happens in uh, echo. Thank you. Very you know, we've mentioned, keep it simple. Let's quickly just have uh, Gideo Ojo, then we'll come back to Balaba, because it's itching to be part of this uh, discussion frontally. But let's, Gideo, react to some of these comments. Well, um, thanks for the opportunity. I want to re-emphasize my earlier position on the issue of uh, tariff hike, that um, I think we are being led by the nose, by neck and discos. Um, this tariff hike coming on the heels of the increase in VAT uh, from 5% to 7.5% is undesirable at this point. And uh, what my to uh, multi year tariff order says is minor adjustment. And over the past four years, uh, NEC has gone to sleep. The minor adjustment was supposed to be done every six months. Although I'm aware that at some point, government was paying the subsidies for, for, for consumers. But why do you want to do four-year increment in one fair soup? And then you are making people to pay. Because what we have failed to realize with this proposed hike in electricity tariff is that it's going to affect the price, prices of goods and services across board. Everyone involved in one economic activity or the other will adjust their own pricing too. And not all of us are government workers. Already, Nigerian Labor Union are saying the minimum wage that government gave them, for which many of them have not even enjoyed, is not being taken back with the left hand. So, I don't work for government. I'm a private uh, business person. So, how do I benefit under this? We, 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 we need to really think this through that the, the implication. The long-term implication of this hike will be that there will be exponential increase in the cost of goods and services. Everybody will adjust their own cost. The other thing I need to emphasize is the issue of metering. I'm embittered by that because I've paid for a meter in my Ibadan house, for which I has not been delivered over the past years. And I don't know why I should continue to be served estimated billings. Now, if you are able to allow the meter manufacturers to directly sell to members of the public who wants to buy. And all the discos do is activation and selling of the hair time. I mean, um, uh, vending the electricity for those who want to recharge. That would be fine. Then what I also want to do, as I said in my earlier reference article of Wednesday this week, is there is need for us to even have independent forensic audit of these 11 discos and including the Jenkos and then the Transmission Company of Nigeria. We need to know their solvency status. We need to know their technical depth. Many of them just got this license under the pretext that they are foreign technical partners. The kind of funding that was expected to come into the power sector has not come. And yet we have the Minister of Power telling us earlier this week that there are cabals that are selling this country down. Now I ask the question again. With the existence of the cabal, the other time the Minister of State for Power was saying that there are demons that are not allowing Nigerians to enjoy electricity. Should we not be paying more for darkness? Should we be paying more for darkness? Why can't all households in Nigeria be metered? And why can't we the, 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 um, uh, the, the, the centralize the metering so that I can go and buy meter from any manufacturer that catches my fancy? Let there be that competition rather than the disco serving as middlemen and asking us to pay to them and then three, six months, one year, two years, the meters are not delivered. That is, that is shortchanging. That is fraudulent activity. And it, like I reference you, go and read it. It's on the website of NEC that many customers who pay for meters under CAPME were not supplied. And now we have moved on to another metering policy. So why is it so difficult for us 
So individual just like you buy mobile phones, go to the market and buy your mobile and buy your meters. Let them install it for you. Then the discos will give you light. Okay, I, I, that's a safe place to land, uh, Mr. Ojo. L let me let's bring it back to Lagos here. Yeah. So he said, can we go to the market and buy meters like you go to the market and buy phones? I, Would I you rather support, do that? I quite support Tojo on all fours on this. His reasoning for me is logical, lucid. Look. The discos are distributors of, le of electricity. The most modern way to account for the use of electricity in the world now is digital metering. There are manufacturers in Nigeria that the discos are deliberately frustrating from having their wares sold by Nigerians, bought by Nigerians who, who need them. And they would rather go and do some anky panky arrangement with some foreign manufacturers, people losing jobs here. Don't you know that there are digital metal manufacturers in, in Lagos, about two or three? And their, their production, our discos are deli were deliberately until Governor Fashola, when he was minister, first time that they must be buying from them. Mm. Even still, they still. So, I want to believe that re the reasoning of my colleague. Ojo on this is clear blue water. It behoves the government now to make the regulator do what the NCC does in telecoms. You provide telecom service, I don't necessarily have to buy my handset from you. There is a minimum standard for handset that the standard organization of Nigeria would have made sure that all answers in Nigeria are calibrated to it. All digital meters would have been calibrated to it. So, instead of the fleecing of people like Ojo, who paid for meter and has not been given, and yet you are, you are, you are monthly slapping him with estimated metering, or guesstimation. That was the first time I had the English in. <laughs> yes. <laughs> It's, it's open rubbish. Okay, uh, uh, so uh, I, uh, I, I don't want to be a bit uh, insensitive. Uh, you narrated a story about you being kidnapped, and uh, that wasn't uh, a very palatable experience. It, it, to be honest and, with you. And um, I'm sorry about that. I think I just remember, you know, you just forgot. I remember that time. It, and, it's, it's convenient okay, for let, you to forget. Wait, you want wait, to take wait, my wife. Oh, you told me that you want to take a cocaine. My act of God. This is a serious <laughs> program. This is a serious <laughs> program. <laughs> this is not a beer parlor. But, 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 okay, uh, like I said. He, he told me before we came on here, he told okay. me in the green room, that he liked, me. he liked my wife more than me on set. Because the girl is brilliant. But she was I'm coming to back to the issue I was of... Okay, emotions. okay. Don't worry. Next time we know what to do. We'll okay. put up your mic. Okay. Let's go to the issue. <laughs> now... The, the uh, Okay, let me quickly, I was told by my director to get a final comment from Gide Ojo. Uh, Gide, please, you have to do me a favor. You have 60 seconds to have your final submission on two other issues because you made your submission on electricity tariff. Can I quickly get your comment on Amoteku and U.S.-Iraq? 30, 30 seconds. Well, uh, on that person, Amoteku, I think I've landed on that. Uh, it's, 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 it's a child of necessity. It's highly needed, but it was to be well, well policed, well structured. The uh, civilians who are coming on board from OPC to uh, local hunters and as well as the local vigilantes must be well kitted so that they are easily identifiable. And, and they must deal with the issue of fifth columnist amongst them. Uh, amongst them, because what has happened over the years is the infiltration of the security agencies and the issue of corruption. We must also nip it in the bud. This operation at Moteku must not be uh, uh, must not be corruptized, if I can use that word. Then on the U.S.-Iran relationship, uh, it is in the enlightened best interest of U.S. to promote world peace and not to endanger the world. Uh, this issue of regime change and assassination and using, um, uh, you know, um, strong tactics to deal with other countries is not helping the world, neither is it helping the U.S. government itself. Because while the terrorists may not be able to strike on the soil of U.S., other interests of U.S. outside of the shores of that country may, will be under perpetual threat. And Iran too must call itself to order. 
This issue of nuclear uh, weapon and issue of regime change, which has also been, uh, which it has also been accused of, uh, it also have to have an introspection. The two warring parties, the two countries in this phase of, must not bring the world, must not endanger the entire world uh, by starting a third world war. Uh, the beginning of war is what can be predicted. The outcome of war is never, never predictable. So it is better to judge war than to war war. And then the United Nations needs to come out very strongly. And still stand now, you, Russia is taking the side of Iran, and the rest may be giving tacit support to the U.S. But if we won, one vote will not allow the Security Council to do what is needed. So the UN must come out very strongly to condemn what is happening uh, between Iran and US. I think that is a safe place to land. It is also fair to note that uh, President Trump said that uh, the US is not gunning for any regime change. Yes, Jideojo, thank you so much. We do appreciate your time. We'll let Jideojo go now. Uh, why we give uh, Ms. Alba? I'm you know, sad you didn't give me the opportunity to, to be Jideojo because the last time I was in a set with Jide yeah. was about six or so years in England when it was about resume coming back to Nigeria oh. from the diaspora. I think he's listening to you. I'm a senior in the returning. I'm a, I'm a senior. I returned about 14 years ago. Oh, you're welcome now. again. Oh, so, okay, after, not uh, a deportee. Uh, you know, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm 20, 20th of, June, 20th of January, I'm going. Oh, so, you know, where I'm are you going to? He doesn't like me, you see? You see? I won't. You know, so I was going to say, as we try to wrap this up, yeah, as, as we try to wrap this up, you know, Judy Ojo talked about um, saboteurs and demons. Oh, yes, and, uh, right. You know, estimated billings and all of that. Would you say that it's a case of misplaced priority? You have a call. I got it. I got it. I got it. Uh, yes, oh. so we have to take this. Oh, yeah. okay. The, the callers are the kings. Seconds. The callers are the kings on. Oh, okay, yes, yes, go not ahead. the deportee. Yeah. Let's have uh, <laughs> Not the deportee. <laughs> <laughs> affinity between the Shia. Mm -hmm. Iran is the capital of Shi uh, Shiitism in the world. Mm -hmm. We have a, is, a, is, a, is a sect in Islam. Mm -hmm. And the people who, who okay. protested in Abuja uh, are, com are committed uh, Shiites. Yes, so that's, that must be the link. Yes. But let's be very honest with ourselves. We don't, like the gentleman rightly said, we don't need to be importing other people's problems into our country. We have enough problems of our own. <laughs> Yes, absolutely. Yeah, we quickly so, want to get your whole final comment. Yes. Um, As we wrap it up, yeah, I was asking, you know, we I don't want to talk to somebody who is calling me a deputy. <laughs> you, you, Please, you, ask you, you honor me, you treat me with respect. <laughs> yeah, God bless you. Oh, yeah, your a question. Amen. <laughs> so I, I referred to what Jide Ojo said earlier on about demons, you know, stopping us. Oh, Jide is right. You know, so I was going to say, is it a case of misplaced priorities? No, his concerns are right. When you have a, any policing entity in the world, mm. because of either the genuine constitutional powers that the policing authority has, or indeed this Amotekun, which is an extra popular extra constitutional entity, especially because of the fact that it's an extra constitutional entity, the, the people who are sitting at the top of his governance infrastructure must make sure that two things don't happen. One, fifth columnists don't infiltrate to conduct themselves in a manner either by abusing citizens or abusing, and I mean citizens, not only Yorubas, because some people in Amote could not be now because they are wearing that brown, brown shirt. You remember the famous brown shirt mm -hmm. of the Nazis? Mm -hmm. Because they are wearing that brown shirt, they won't be hounding Igbos. They won't be hounding, hounding people from the south-south. We know that in some states even of... Even including north. Uh, 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 even even including north. north. Mm -hmm. Because of the situation that even led to the formation of Amatekun. Mm -hmm. you, you, there are less incidents yeah. that we later discovered that some people from our own side were actually dressing 
Like, Tell so I, I, I am one who believes that given what some people from the East have experienced from, let me be specific now, from Lastma and Trace, our, the operatives of Amotaku must be circumspect enough to be balanced and You're not done yet. Off. You're not done yet. Uh, but let's be clear. You don't want to talk questions. to the party. <laughs> <laughs> You're not in the party. No, I'm, I'm dirty. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, sir. You don't beat me up. Sorry, sir. <laughs> okay, I, I have a duty to also interpret what, what of, one of uh callers said. That, uh, Fantastic. Allah, Allah, Allah tishe, 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 uh, okay. Interpret. It is he who is a, inflicted by an ailment that must, attend that must strive mm. to make sure that the right panacea are put in place to correct Okay, that quickly. Thing. Finally, because of time. Mm. Uh, uh, I know this is something passionate My that sister, you have to say. My sister, please talk to me. My sister. Excuse me. Our time is fast spent. <laughs> okay. So quickly, let me have your take. Um, the shaky notes, you talk so much about it. As we speak, Political interest, I know what Don faces. I'm a part of Don, sort of, and I suspect that you are one of their intellectuals too. Mm. How do we make sure that political interest does not truncate you know this, what, what we call noble idea? You know what gladdened me yesterday? The governors who are intellectually independent, irrespective of their political parties, yesterday showed up when it mattered. Mm. And that is the beauty of the Yoruba race. The beauty of the Yoruba race is that when the gauntlet is to be picked. Mm. And that is why we are about the only entity in this part of the world that has an array on the Kakavu. Notwithstanding the fact that they didn't turn up yesterday because you felt slighted. We, we always rally behind the power Thank to solve you. a common so problem. Wonderful. Thank you very much. I guess we will just let it lie there. Thank you very <laughs> yes. much, my sister. <laughs> it's just throwing tantrums. What do you mean by intellectually independent? What about those that were not there? But that's a question for another day. We have the power Coyote. to wrap up. You want to do on your political program. I said the governors who are intellectually <laughs> independent. Coyote, you're not going to open another we're kind of close the show. Thank you so we'll much, uh, Boloba. Thank you for, for, always a pleasure. for, thank you for, for coming privilege. on board. Yes, it's always a pleasure. Yeah, so we'll, we'll quickly take a short break, yeah? No, that's a, that's a wrap. Oh, this are you kidding? He wants to send me on. <laughs> let, him, let him send me on. Thank okay. you so much, Bola. Thank, thank, thank you for your time. You. It's, 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 it's nice having a war. I, I, you don't must turn it to head to head. No, well. You know, but <laughs> go to the money me on, please. Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> okay, it's time to call it a wrap. Trust me, uh, Zika and David, I'm sure they've had enough rest. They'll be here on Monday. Absolutely. To start up. I mean, to continue or to do another edition of, of News Hub. I'm Kaya Delade Ide, and this is obviously Vivian. Okay. Of thank, the chair. It's time to say bye bye. Yes, bye. And thank you. Bye bye. <laughs> <laughs>